Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire and Fours the KNT. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, currently, um, a lot of things are going on in China. You know, there's a lot of anti foreign backlash. There's been, we, we murdered an uh, international advisor. Things are kind of going off the rails. We're going to have a new Congress very, very soon. As the nation unites, a party divides. All governing co coalitions will come to an end. Very cool. The Third National Congress of the Chinese Kuomintang has officially been convened in the grand capital city of Nanjing, a heralding the start of a new age for the Republic of China. At long last, the Great War of Resistance against the Japanese imperialists has been concluded, and the region of Manchuria restored properly to the Chinese nation. Chairman Wang Jinwei once again took the stand under the grandiose portraits of Dr. Sun Yat-sen, and the flags of the party draped along its sides. What was different, however, was a newly commissioned portrait of the chairman that was placed strategically to the right of the Eternal Premier, a move that has been marked on with looks of scorn and anger by members of the PAC. Wang began his speech by thanking the party for following truth to principles of Dr. Sen, and for the martyrs who have sacrificed their lives during the war resistance. While the revolutionary phase of military rule is hereby concluded with the NRA's recent victory of the Japanese, the revolutionary party rule must continue as Wang warned the reactionaries within the ranks of the party who threatened to stabilize it. Nonetheless, a party reshuffle is bound to happen with the elections of the new Central Executive Committee, and the chairman anticipated to happen. While he has long remained apolitical from the quarrels of the RCA and the PAC, he concluded with his opening remarks that he believed the new reorganization of the party is needed to emulate the same change of the party since 1924. He had announced the conservatives within the Indian clique and a reconstruction faction as degenerate forces, uh, shifting, uh, stifling the spirit of the re reorganization. This spirit is won the Second Northern Expedition, and Wang concludes his remarks with a firm acknowledgement that while the United Front's policy of the Chinese syndicalists was not an aspect of the first reorganization, it was a great mistake if the United States is the policy should lead to the rejection of the spirit of reorganization. While scores, of, uh, while scores of cheers rang out from the delegates of the RCA and members of the CSP, only polite applause is heard from the PAC section of the Congress, while members of the Royal Society and Reconstruction Factors stay silent. Well, hopefully we don't completely destroy our coalition. A League Divided For years, the League of Chinese Syndicalists adopted the French political methodology of syndicalist comp uh, compromise. With its multiple faction, the unions coalescing under a shared alliance with the proletariat struggle, uh, Corping with the Chinese Kuomintang and strikes such as the Hong Kong Cannon Strikes in 1925, as well as the Shanghai Uprising in 1932. The policy of Chinese socialists outside the Kuomintang have long been out, uh, one of convenience, especially due to the instruction of Paris and London. While the Kuomintang victory in the Second World Expedition and the War of Resistance, the League has grown notice noticeable, noticeable in terms of influence and now finds itself being courted by the Official Action Committee and a reorganized com Comrade Association in their struggle for dominance of the party. Among the faction of the LCS, the Orthodox faction and Chinese Syndicalist Party have grown uh, much strength over the years, and a member of the Cheng Duxi, uh, Li Dengxiao, and Li, uh, Li Lishan control much of the LCS's function and directives. Now they're faced with a decision on whether or not to support Chairman Wang's new declaration of reorganization with their influence, they can surely tip the scales for both the PAC and the RCA. So it's now going to go 20% in our favor, which means I am absolutely in like complete control here. Which again, I kind of don't want to be. I want to be. I don't want to be completely dominant. I just want to be here. I don't mean. I don't want to be losing my stability. And my delegates protect. My delegates protect regional's power. The third Congress attacked the delegates from near and far, all with their own agendas. But as they approached Nanjing, all have pressed down on the suffocating era of division between the party's factions. Asia, the chairman and opposition have played a tug of war support, uh, delaying, uh, relaying the all sorts of unscrupulous tactics to win. One of the value prizes had been the male delegation, one of the more autonomous regional governments in a republic. They have the decreed freedom for party patronage, and they made them valuable wildcard and party intrigue. Ma Hong Kyu has struck an independent note, striving to advance his government's own interests, for better or for worse. The Mac League's power dynamics is a solid uh, provincial route, uh, independent from even the Kuomintang's spiraling patronage networks. Still, with nationalism at its peak, this sort of particularism has drawn plenty of ire. Am I not, um... We have eight days to increase our integration here. Because right now you're just associated with us. And then this will allow them to become a autonomous government. Which is different, I think. The polarization of the NRA. The National Revolution Army is created to be the military arm of the Kuomintang. Directly loyal to the party and the revolution, and, th and thereby freeing the Kuomintang from the beholden of regional warlords. Under the leadership and minister of war, uh, Li Jushan, the NRA's high command has worked uh, towards relative political neutrality, refraining from interference in civilian affairs or taking sides in party politics debates the best they can. 
This status quo, however, is becoming increasingly under strain. Li Jishan has privately reported to Chairman Wang that more and more officers are joining radical groups within the military. Worryingly, the main benefactor is not the usual suspects in Deng Yanda and his Wampa Military Academy Revolutionary Classmate Association. Um, and although Deng is proud to admit in the public, he has privately confessed to his close allies his fears of the um, WMARCA uh, is losing respect to younger officers and fleshy graduate cadets. The bright benefactor of the ship appears to be the China Revival Society, a group of totalitarian nationalists led by General uh, Hu Zhongnan and other disaffected officers. Although destructs the military old guard, they are ra many radicals in the CSP who begun to organize the militias independently, and the NRA is increasingly disobeying the directions of the CSP's orthodox faction and the international's advisors. So we let the workers radicalize, or we have the soldiers radicalize. Radicalism is rising in the Kuomintang, representing political polarization, social division, and military discontent. While well, some radicalization is expected to happen in our revolutionary movement, it is wise to tempt down or at least lower it than the support for the RCA PAC. Otherwise, some radicals may uh, conclude the party center committee is rudeness. Okay, so I want to increase you by a small amount. So right now they're at 52%. And we need to keep them. The liberals have pushed on. The Reconstruction faction has managed to survive across the collapse of the first national expedition and while well, and the exile period, and arrival of the Kuomintang fortunes, and yet there are some who doubt how long after they would last before fading to oblivion, abandoned by the increasingly socialist party. The Third Congress, many believe, would be their last straw before they were sidelined. At best, perhaps Sun Fo and a few other high levels members would be able to scrounge up some favorable sincere. If that, is the if that is their case, however, they did not show it today. The Reconstruction faction in their unofficial caucus meeting have acted as lively as ever, freshly energized by the fact that civilian rule is right around the corner. In their minds, the end of the war means the end of military dominance and priorities, giving a primarily civilian-based RF a leg up over the both the PAC and the RCA. Okay, so they're going to get a little bit more popular. Can I lower radicalization a little bit? Rural society goes up. So let us get the Orthodox faction... Let's secure international technical aid. Revolutionary radicalism is currently at 52%. Which I think is represented by the totalist here, I believe. We'll, we'll, we'll find out, I guess, if there's ever, if there's ever a coup in, uh, in our country, then we're going to have issues. Okay, so you're now a... We're now incorporating you a little bit more. Fantastic. Can I incorporate you again? Apparently not. Negative 26. Okay, so totalism is going to go by quite a bit. The Long Shadow. Outside the convention hall, the fiction schemers operate. These lobbyists, who were hoped by some to be confined to corrupt bourgeois democracies and degenerate baying establishments, they are unfortunately alive and well in national China. Uh, well, then carefully uh, placed gifts, promising a job process with a wide rate of threats, they have engaged in negotiations with wives, uncles, friends, and delegates. But they are perhaps the least of the budding Chinese democracy's workies, operating even more underhand methods are the skirting agents of the Luban, who cast a long shadow over the convention. Politicians boast about their plots and plans, but few can match up with the sheer ruthlessness and violence of China's spy masters, who have been battled in the dark on behalf of their factions. There are multiple reports of delegates who have decided to result, uh, resign from their seat and advance the convention for health reasons and numerous cases of sudden shifts and allegiances. Tragically, however, there is a little time or energy to investigate this epidemic of poor health, with all factions focused their energy on the conference at hand. An interesting development, observers have noted that the Congress has their first appearance in what seems to be the CRS-aligned caucus, led by former student radical and army officer Lu Botong. They are joined by minor party uh, celebrity Cheng Ching Ko and the firstborn son of Cheng Kai-shek. This group are believed to be a source of multiple sort of rumors going around the Congress about Wang, accusing him of trails of betrayal, corruption, and even murder. You say this is bad, the buffoonery? They've done worse. So now the total is at 30%. Which does make them the most popular party, which is something that maybe we need to worry about ever so slightly. Yeah, let us uh, decrease radicalism at least a little bit. Okay, that's just by 1%, which is not that great. Actually, that's pretty bad. We can increase you more. 75 political power. The impeachment vote. At long last, enough is enough. Since before the opening of the Third Congress, the Visional Action Committee has gone to work to ensure that Chinese democracy does not die with dictatorial desires of Wang's PAC and the WMARCA. 
Okay, members have been uh, secretly threatened, bribed, and cajoled members of the Congress to vote in favor of the PAC's attempt to upstage Wang. They have reached out to members and leaked shiny syndicalists, reconstruction factors, and even some RCA moderates, scrounging up every last vote they can in their favor. With an unprecedented volume of votes for members of the Congress, high-ranking members of the PAC, such as Deng Yanda and Zhang Bojin, have presented the Central Supervisory Committee of the Central Committee at a man in the case of Wang Jinwei's failure to carry out the duties of acting chairman. With the four elders of Kuomintang making up all but one of the Central Superiority Congre Committee members, the people was inevitable. However, the conviction requires a vote from the entire Congress, and that remains up in the air. Without it, impeachment by the Supervisory Committee holds little weight. But the charge delivered, Song Chi Ling herself has gotten up out of her seat to announce Wang in the name of her husband. While Wang may surely have been a common doctor's son, Song declared that Wang must resign at once in order to end the phase of tutelage. The Congress lies stunned in silence and Wang Jinwei stands to defend himself. Okay, so I mean, this seems Wang carries the day. Standing up on his feet, Wang quickly denied the allegations directed towards him. He declared brazenly and boldly that he was merely following the late leader's instructions. Was it not integral to the concept of reorganized party that it was the duty of the party to instruct that the three peoples, of the, the three principles of the people, the three principles that, uh, through their pro propagation, serve as the only means to save the nation? How can any true Kuantong member say that the party's members should not strive for the fulfillment of this doctrine? If Dr. Sun's teaching are to be carried out, the party as a living organ must indeed be reorganized to such a common goal, and organization and discipline can be strengthened. With his mesmeric hand gestures and his dramatic pauses, he included his speech with a thunderous applause. The PAC found itself stunned and humiliated. In a dramatic uh, roll cast vote, the Congress voted not to convict, and Wang was soon voted in for another term as chairman of the party. At a brisk pace, Wang, uh, Wang sought his revenge, Rapidly reshuffling party posts and uh, naming a new CEC filled with RCA and resident royal faction royal loyalists. With the majority of the Congress being loyal to the RCA, members of the PAC and political rivals of the RCA, such as the Reconstruction Faction, have left the capital of the city of Wuhan, where General Denyanga has proclaimed rebellion to save the National Revolution. As officers of the NCR begin taking sides, the China Revival Society has remained silent regarding the dramatic developments, but one can never expect silence from Hugh and his shadowy cast cadre of followers. Wuhan has been declared a free city and uh, forced the post of Wang Jinwei regime back to convene there, making her stand at 550 kilometers from the capital. It is clear that if Wang is to hold on to recent conquests of the Congress, he must deal with the Wuhan government quickly. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we need new um, leaders because most of my generals have abandoned. Uh... Okay, so we're going to take an army off of the border with Germany for now. We're going to keep them near Nanjing. I don't know if that's going to matter or not. But I guess we'll see. This is not really where I was expecting this to go. Let me just put it that way. We'll have our units uh, deploy up north. So, we're going to save here. Because I don't know exactly how this is going to go down. The Assault on Wuhan. Having received direct orders of the chairman, General Zheng Zhijong, uh, was ordered to bring several veterans and elite NRA divisions to crush the uprising in Wuhan. The military ordered a full assault on the city of Wuhan, equipped with heavy artillery and light bombers. Nothing short of unconditional surrender was to be demanded from the rebel factions. At dawn, the city of Wuhan became yet another battleground, with ongoing artillery shelling and gunfire from both sides, as loyalist forces stormed the city. However, it was clear that the military advantage of the Nanjing government was too much to bear for the PAC militias, who immediately began plans to evacuate to the heartland and base of popular support, the province of Fujian. San Qingling's face was filled with tears as he saw the slain and wounded comrades that had fought with her since the Fujian insurgency. Unwilling to throw more lives away for the revolutionary struggle, she sent word at once to Wang's government to negotiate a surrender for all PAC and anti-Wang forces. Despite the chagrin of her closest friends and allies, General Zhen Yanga, who still believed the PAC forces could rally and fight back, Song Chen Ling, Song Jie Wen, and other civilian leaders in the PAC have offered their full surrender to Wang and the Nanjing government. The party's fighting and war seems to have ended for now. Well, let's apply a gentle hand. Hopefully that doesn't backfire. If it backfires, we're just going to save and reload. As long as, uh, okay, an awkward piece. An awkward send the peace who returns to the Republic of China with the Provisional Action Committee thoroughly disintegrated as a political organization. Under the instruction of the NRA, PAC militias were to be disbanded and the Wampa Military Academy uh, prohibited from a formal organization. Ever pragmatic and playing the role of a Hummer chairman, Chairman Zheng Jiwei has officially announced amnesty for those who fought against him, citing that now is the time for healing and not war. The press of the RCA, while meanwhile has been busy printing a publication declaring the movement 
uh, decrying the movement. Headlines screaming that Yana and Sean rumor romantic relationship have been common, along with accusations of PSA corruption and voter intimidation. It has now been reported that Wang has ordered all publications slandering the widow of the Eternal Premier to cease, but nonetheless, such accusations have uh, certainly uh, earned the anger of every headstrong Deng. Perhaps thinking of Amnesty rule and his own position of Kuomintang protects him, Deng in recent days criticized the new government's leadership, saying that they are no different than the reactionaries whom they fought the section uh, Northern Expedition. There are whispers, whispers in the dark, that unless Deng does not cease to protest, the chairman may be inclined to act. We're now down to 47% stability. Very cool. Remember when we got like 97? Those were the days, man. Those were the days. I, I miss that. I miss that. But I think that at least for right now, this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. If you enjoyed, run a thumbs up. Now, do we click some down? You want to see more? Subscribe and goodbye.